And let's bring in Ali McCartney, UBS Private Wealth Management Managing Director. Ali, thanks for being here. Um, you know, we were having a bit of a discussion earlier about what investors are worried about right now, and they've got their pick, right? You've got um, some increasing concerns about growth from China. You've got the Delta variant. You have what we heard from the Fed yesterday in terms of tapering. Um, what do you think is driving most of the concerns? And do you think in the end, you know, markets are going to overcome them and continue to push higher? The short answer is yes. I don't think the concerns have really changed considerably all that much over the last number of years. They've just, excuse me, the last number of months. I think really what's happened is sort of the order of importance and information. So the Delta variant and the numbers that we're seeing growing fourfold in the U.S. Um, and even larger outside um, has existed again since February of last year, March of last year. The question is whether the Delta variant uh, continues to have additional curbs of mobility that affect the economics and spending of, uh, of this country and affect uh, the pace at which, let's say, the emerging markets in Europe can continue to recover as well. The Fed, again, that has been with us since the very beginning. How accommodative is our Federal Reserve going to be? What is fiscal policy in the U.S. going to look like? And is the rest of the world going to echo that? Um, definitely some concerns around that, although I would argue that those concerns have eased with the increased transparency that the Fed has been giving us and with, you know, a path that looks like maybe a December beginning of or announcement of taper, which goes into the beginning of next year, uh, 120 million less of buying a day. And then the, you know, the other question, sorry, billion of buying a day. And then, you know, the path of interest rates. And I think that there is and has been a lot of telegraphing from the Fed that that looks like a 2023 event. And we agree that that's the case. They seem to be, again, commenting on the market. The minutes reflected this. And we expect to continue to see that in the Jackson Hole conversations, that inflation is under control and that they are getting towards their progress on the jobs numbers. Although remember with, uh, you know, in past recessions in past contractionary periods, the job market has taken about 28 to 29 months to recover. And that was when it was, quote unquote, a normal recession or shrinking of the economy, as opposed to some crazy, you know, inflicted economic coma event. So that's going the right direction. It may not be going as fast or as sort of equally as, as the Fed would have liked, but that continues to happen. And then you have issues around um, some of the data we've seen, we saw slowing growth from China. We saw some uh, sales numbers for July that gave it people a little pause. But again, we think all of this are sort of normal ups and downs of what happens once you reach the peak of the peak. And so we expect growth to continue. We see a super strong consumer, especially with the back to school, we see a super accommodative Fed. Um, and fixed income is just not a place that we can put client money to the extent we have in the past. So you still have that conversation around Tina. There is no alternative pushing investors, individual and institutional, into taking risk in order to keep up with inflation. And that's a great environment to invest in equities. Well, Ali, talk about peaking. I see your uh, cute pup uh, behind you peeking into the shot. That was very, uh, very cool. Uh, they, <laughs> the puppy looks bullish. I, I think they're liking your call, uh, Ali. No, but what you mentioned uh, on the market weakness here, does that mean you know investors are in fact getting a little more nervous? Should they be buying on this weakness? So yes, so you know I'm personally buying and I'm buying for clients on any weakness. We ourselves, you know we've had an 18 percent year in the market. We are up over in some uh, you know market measures a hundred percent from the bottom. So there's you know there's no way to argue that this is an uncomfortable time to invest. It feels uncomfortable. We've had 200 days of highs in the last number of months. But but again, if you go back to that conversation around where else do you put money and how do you continue to construct and build a portfolio in such a bizarre environment and one where you're also going from a 30 year bull market and bonds to one in which it's going to be quite challenging as interest rates go up. You simply have to invest. If you look at the street and some of the numbers and the frequency of revisions, not only to individual stocks, but to price targets for year end 2021 and then into 2022 and 2023, you're starting to see numbers in the S&P. We have a 4650 for eight months. Hence, you, I know Goldman came out with a 4750. So there is absolutely still upside. 
And, you know, there's so many things that are supportive of that. A, Fed uh, continued, um, you know, involvement in the market and support thereafter. Vaccination campaigns, we have booster shots that were discussed yesterday. We have the rest of the world increasingly getting vaccinated. We have an environment in which we believe at UBS, using UBS Evidence Lab or proprietary AI technology, that you're going to see a 30% increase in the amount of money going to dividends and buybacks for the S&P 500 over the next number of um, uh, actually the next 12 months. So all of those things are saying that there is still room to move in the equity market, especially in cyclicals.